So Protonautics is a CNC machining company. So we take solid lumps of metal, plastic, and we, we subtract, we machine away the surplus to be left with a complex part underneath. The main thing with the CNC machining is the accuracy you can get. Some parts that we deliver, especially for laser eye surgery equipment, has to be within six microns. And we've got a quarter measure machine that, you know, 0.006, you know, or six hundredths of a millimeter. That's what we have to guarantee results. If you've got intersecting lasers going into the back of an eyeball, that's, that's what's sort of needed. Blanks like that are put inside and the mill will come down and start machining turn it into something like this. So it was great to uh, have people who are just starting in their career here to learn about what we do. You're, you're familiar with all the traditional uh, metal working tools of a mill and a lathe and saws. Uh, this is the next stage. And after this, as far as technology goes, this is the next stage. And after that, then there's additive manufacturing, 3D printing. Our business currently is, I would say, a snapshot of technology that probably started in the 70s a computerised driving of mills. It's reaching to the limit, I think, of what is capable of this technology and it's starting to, starting to become, um, give ground to additive manufacturing. At the moment, there's still a gap between the two. Um, I believe that uh, the material properties of uh, metal sintering technology or additive manufacturing still isn't uh, at the, the level of um, proper milled, forged, uh, uh, alloys and steels, but the gap is closing. Probably within the next five or ten years, we, we identify it as a strategic through our business to get into that camp for sure. This is a, a radiator for electric uh, vehicle recharging station. So there's an inlet and an outlet, and it just basically wicks heat. Um, we make various different sizes out here, but for a company called Tritium, and they're having great success, so we really love this one. We've got a business management system, so everything we have to do to say we're ISO accredited, that we follow all the procedures, all the rules for how to run a business. So if we're making parts and they're going into an aeroplane, helicopter, and then if there's an issue, we need complete traceability that it was the right material was bought, was ordered, was received, was used and we need complete traceability that all the procedures for that job were, fun, were followed on all the machines out there and all the things that happened afterwards, everything was followed. Um, for aviation purposes and uh, automotive or for medical purposes, you need to have that traceability. So the software also allows us to produ uh, produce our and control our documentation, either for in-house or for the documentation we send to the customers. So we have version controls. It's also the interface with the, um, the actual operators of the machinery. To make that, we have to program the machines. So they're called CNC machines, right? So computer numeric control. You're guiding the computer in telling it how it's going to cut all the operations needed to make that piece. We watched the uh, simulation of the uh, CNC mill. Uh, removing material from that block of aluminium was eye-opening. Like back, back in the 80s, that would have all done by hand with a a hand router or a mill. The thing I enjoy most about my job is uh, it, the, it constantly changes. Uh, I started drafting with a, a T-square and a pencil. Um, within 10 to 20 years, I was using a parametric uh, 3D modeling package. And now a lot of that is being taken over by um, cloud-based applications. Pretty cool how we're using more of our brains instead of our hands. Like, technology, it's pretty advanced now. So we also do not just machining of raw parts, but we've got some assemblies. After there's some things on the table there that some people can have a look of other customers' products and I've got different parts got to go together a certain way. You can look at them, if you're smart enough, you can try and figure out exactly which way they go. So you felt the weight of the aluminium, brass and copper? Yeah, the copper's really dense, it's heavy than a little bit, yeah. So how much chemistry do you need to know in this job? Um, <laughs> we, have a, we have an industrial chemist here who's running the plating show, but I mean the chief machinists, they have to know the different properties of all the metals. And again, it's not so much what you study, it's what you experience, it's you know what you've you know, what different design, different engineers have come and they say, I need this material for this reason. They'll, different plastics especially got very different machining properties. You know, they go faster or slower. 
surface treatment. So everybody knows that metal, what does metal do, especially your steel? Rusts. So even aluminium, do you think aluminium rusts? Even aluminium, yes. So we do all sorts of surface treatment because like 80% of the stuff we machine here is aluminium. It's just a very common, lightweight, very useful material. So we also do our own anodizing and we do some steel and some other things. When you see the machines out there, you'll note, you'll note that this one is actually machined on this orientation. So the first they machine a dovetail and a solid rectangular block. And then this dovetail is held in a vise. And then if you look at all the different angles here that this is machined from, this thing's on a tombstone that rotates around. All the machining's done from this angle. It's not just about programming a tool path. You also have to think how you're gonna hold it for the first operation, then hold it on the cut part for the second operation. And those jigs and fixtures also have to be designed in three dimensions. So this is one set of jigs where you would put in parts um, there's another one of these inside the machine, so the idea is a person would be loading blanks of metal on here while it's being machined inside and you step back and then stop around and do it again. Um, it's all about optimising labour and uh, machine time. Uh, in every area, the, the, the envelope's being pushed out, and, but I'm still valid, I'm still relevant. Um, what I'm doing, I'm still adding value and you've got to ask yourself how, and it's because the principles underneath uh, design uh, remain constant. The tools that we use are constantly evolving and constantly changing and if you've got an open mindset, if you're willing to uh, adapt new te adopt new technology and, and, and move with it, you'll just get better at your job. Uh, and, but don't lose the principles because they won't change. I've learnt many things that there's a lot of job opportunities, especially in the future coming. Um, we can create so many things and there's just so many job opportunities than I thought involving STEAM within these jobs, like there's so much science behind it and design and maths. Especially in schools now, we're being shown where we can apply those, yeah. that knowledge. Instead of just saying, here, yeah, you have maths and science and then you find your career yourself. We're being shown where we can apply those, that knowledge and how to use it properly. We're only a small part of uh, the technological sphere that's out there. Um, I'd encourage you to, to embark on this career. Uh, there's a, a, um, almost a limitless um, amount of information and areas you can apply yourself or specialise in if you want to. Um, or, like myself, generalise. Um, uh, and the scope is there is wherever you want to push yourself. To design something that's useful to somebody with quality to a certain price, that's a principle. Um, uh, you hear a lot about project management. The tools to do project management continuously evolve. There's all these programs, but the how to make something happen is what project management's about. So as long as you work out that you want to be involved in how to make something happen, just stay abreast of the tools and don't be scared of it, okay? The, the first time you run a program, so that, you know, when it comes from the office out onto the machines, well, one thing a bit different about our machining shop is that we, everything is controlled in the office. We don't have tradesmen at the machines who, oh yeah, I know how to make that part because they might leave and then the company doesn't know how to make that yep. part anymore. Yep. But because everything's controlled from the office and the same program is always used, it comes back out on the machines and different tradesmen can run that same program. But when it's a brand new program, the first time it's used, it has lots of issues. You know, like the first three or four that came out of that part with a junior programmer who was let to go by, you know, guided along but let free. Yeah, you made quite a few mistakes, but the thing is, mis some mistakes have to be made, you know, to learn. The learning skill is probably something you need. You need the enthusiasm. You need someone who is uh, uh, an active listener, um, who wants to be more than they are, um, who just sees the, the, the menial job they start with as a stepping stone to building their expertise and knowledge to get to somewhere of a, where they can use that with, with uh, with uh, more discretion, um, but not immediately see that they're going to um, just get job fulfilment from where they start. Give the kids a name, give them something to live for, give them, wow, I want to work in, a, I want to own a factory like that, I want to do something, I want to achieve something, give them something, and the, you know, kids need a dream, they need to be shown that there is something they can do with their life, and, and they'll, they'll find their way forward. Yeah.